Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here with a video looking at Economics Diagram Disasters. Part one, one of a series. So I've chosen 10 diagrams and you have to try and spot the errors in the diagrams that you're about to see. So what I suggest you do is you press that pause button on the video whenever you want to look at the diagram more closely, write down your answers and then check with us as we go through them. So here's your, here's your 10 diagram disasters. Here's the first one. Production possibility frontier diagram, the output of wheat, the output of beef. Can you spot the error in this diagram? Okay, what did you get? Well, the answer is actually quite straightforward. This diagram is upside down. That is the error. I've drawn it upside down. Now, that's quite an easy one to start with. Let's get a cracking. Here we go. Here's number two, negative production externalities. So take a look at this. This is a diagram showing the economic and social uh, cost, private and social costs from negative production externalities such as chemical pollution and other examples. Press that pause button, have a go. Can you spot one or more errors? Okay, what did you come up with? Here we go. Multiple errors. First of all, they've confused private and social costs. Social costs must lie above private costs. Uh, they've put price on the y-axis, where it should be cost and benefit. And they put revenue on the x-axis, so it should be output or quantity. And of course, because they've confused social and private costs, they've drawn a welfare loss diagram, which is incorrect. Uh, output is actually with should be uh, social optimum is less than the private optimum. So, given the private optimum is likely to be at output Q1, this is the correct diagram, and the social optimum will be Q2, and the deadweight welfare loss will be the area A. B, C. Here's our third example, a maximum price. In this case, uh, where an authority introduces a, a rent cap, a cap on the cost of rented property. Can you spot the er error or errors on this diagram? Have a go. OK, so shall we go through the answers together? The key error here is that they've set the price too high. To be effective, a maximum price, a price ceiling, must be set below the normal equilibrium, the market rent. So you need to be set it at R2 in the market. So the maximum price, you have to set the price below the equilibrium price, otherwise it would be ineffective. Here's number four. Short run cost curves. What do we think here? Take a look at this one. I'll pause for a few seconds. What do we think in terms of the um, potential errors on this diagram? Have a go. So here's a diagram showing short run costs. Did you spot the errors? Here they are. The cost curves have been labeled incorrectly. Average cost and marginal cost drawn incorrectly. They need to flip. And that third curve there is not average fixed cost. It is average variable cost. So marginal cost always cuts average from below, average variable and average total cost. And the AVC curve converges on average total cost because fixed cost per unit falls as output goes up. Right, are we ready? Here is diagram disaster number five. And it's a diagram showing total monopoly profit. Total monopoly profit. Press that pause button, have a go, write down one or more errors if you can find them. So what do we think here? Have you spotted some errors or is this correct? Is Jeff tricking you? Is this actually a correct diagram to draw? Well, no, uh, because first of all, they've uh, incorrectly labelled marginal average revenue. It should be the other way around. So AR is monopoly demand. MR would be uh, lower, below average revenue. And also, interestingly, they found the correct profit maximizing output, that is Q1, but then they've drawn a cross for some reason to show average cost per unit. Now, you'd be amazed how many students do this in the exam. Once you found output Q1, draw up to the demand curve. Yes, that will be the price, P1. But you have to use the average cost curve. There it is, the average cost curve to show the cost per unit. And therefore, the total profit is shown there. Here's number six. Revenue maximization as a business objective. What do we think 
for number six. Again, press the pause button. Are there any errors on this diagram? Can you spot them? Can you explain it? So what do we think here? Is Q1 a revenue maximizing output? Well, the labeling of the diagram is correct. The cost curves and the revenue curves have been labeled correctly, but no, that intersection point is where cost equals revenue. That is the growth maximization output, not revenue max. You maximize revenue at Q1, not there, but where marginal revenue is zero. It's a different price and a different cost per unit. OK, well done. Six micro there. Let's have a look at number seven, which is a macro diagram. The Phillips curve. Again, press that pause button for a few seconds. Have a think. Can I spot one or more errors here? Uh, write them down. So what do we think here? Phillips curve. Does that look right? Quite a complicated diagram. The long and Phillips curve, inflation, unemployment, all part of the picture. What do we think? Well, that's here. There's three errors. Unemployment should be on the x-axis. Inflation should be on the y-axis. And that's not the long and Phillips curve. That is a short and Phillips curve diagram. There's the correct explanation there with the long and Phillips curve at U3. I've drawn it there because if unemployment falls below U3, then inflation starts to really accelerate. So essentially, the natural rate has been reached. So there we go. Some errors there on the Phillips curve. Have a go, please, at number eight. Is the student drawing correctly a positive output gap? What do we think? Press the pause button and come back in a few seconds. So what do we think here? Is this a correct drawing of a positive output gap? P1, Q1, YP, etc. Well, in fact, this diagram is absolutely strewn with errors. How many have you spotted? Shall I show you? Here we go. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it's price and quantity. It's a macro diagram, so that's incorrect. Price and quantity is micro, and likewise P1 and Q1. And they've drawn an equilibrium to the left of potential output. So this, in fact, shows a negative output gap. And they have um, made an error labeling short run and long run aggregates by. They should be the other way around. So this diagram is not fit for purpose. That's a better diagram showing long and aggregate, short and aggregate supply and an equilibrium of I1 to the right of potential output, giving it a positive output gap of AB. Here's our penultimate diagram in this series. I've got 10 for you. Is the diagram correctly showing the impact of an import tariff? Again, press that pause button, have a go. What can you find? So I'm back again. What do we think here? Have you spotted some errors? How many? Or is this actually a totally correct diagram? Well, there's quite a few errors. First of all, the student seems to have confused a tariff. A tariff adds to the world price, doesn't take it away. You might conceivably use this as a kind of trade liberalisation diagram, but no, that's incorrect. So the world price must be higher after the tariff, not lower. Also, they're using macroeconomics, general price level. Short and aggregate supply, aggregate demand, real national output. Now, tariffs are not, it's not a macro diagram. It has macroeconomic effects. But typically you use a tariff when you're uh, looking at the impact of a tariff on a particular industry. Trump imposes a tariff on uh, imports of, of steel from Mexico or from China or from beef from Argentina or Cambodia, in this case here, is introducing a tariff on imports of rice. So this is the correct diagram. Contextualize it. It's the market price of rice on the on the y-axis, the output of rice on the x-axis. Make it clear it's this particular market, and this particular country, and it's nicely drawn. Now, what I would recommend you do, obviously, is label those intersection points, including those with the dots, so that you can look at the welfare effects. How are you doing? We've got one more to go. What have I chosen? I've chosen the Laffer curve. Here we go. Can you spot any errors on this? Laffer curve. Much loved by students. Is this correct? What do we think? Well, press the pause button and have a go. Well, we think there's only really one thing wrong with this. Not the Laffer curve itself, although it's open to question and critique, but they've labelled the axes incorrectly. So it should be tax percentages on the x-axis 
tax revenue on the y-axis. Now, the Laffer curve does not have to be a parabola hitting, hitting zero and 100%. It doesn't have to be that. The, the, the intuition behind the way that curve has been drawn is correct. The idea is that if you raise taxes beyond T3 as a percentage, you might, repeat, might get less tax revenue. So there we go. I think that explains it pretty well. Mislabeled diagrams. OK, so there we go, part one. Uh, I'll create another tone for you in a few days' time, but hopefully this is a good way of checking your understanding of key micro and macro diagrams. Thanks for joining in. Stay happy, stay curious. See you sometime soon.